Transformations are necessary when there is an object or element in a design that needs to be changed in some way. Transformation options within Photoshop include the free transform option, and we've, we've covered free transform throughout the semester, but now we're going to kind of formalize it. And my recommendation is always try free transform first, and if it doesn't work, choose the other options. Uh, other options include to scale, rotate, skew, distort, perspective, or warp. You can also rotate your artwork 180 degrees, 90 degrees clockwise or counterclockwise, and you can flip your artwork horizontally or vertically. Um, the flip horizontal works if you take a, like a selfie and then your shirt is reading backwards or some text in your picture is backwards, you could flip it and so you could read the text in the image. Free transform is a catch-all. It allows Photoshop users to scale and rotate objects quickly. Distort, warp, and perspective options can also be adjusted using keyboard modifiers. We're not going to focus on those because I'm going to show you how to do those kind of um, by choosing those specific options. Um, but if you're interested in keyboard modifiers, you can use the command option and shift key or the control alt and shift key if you're on a PC to modify any of these transformations that we're going to make. In order to free transform, we're going to choose the edit menu and then simply choose free transform. All of the other options are under the edit menu, transform, and then there's a list that you can choose from. Um, you can also use the command or control T keyboard shortcut if you would like to activate the transformation or the free transform tool relatively quickly. And so you can see in this example, I made, um, I made a selection of where it says Kids Rainforest Explorer, and I duplicated it for non-destructive editing purposes, but I could use the free transform to make it bigger, like in the second example, or I could rotate that so that uh, maybe it's pointing a different direction, maybe it wasn't pointing the right direction in the picture, and I could use the free transform to do kind of simple things like that. And so let's jump over to Photoshop. I have this uh, image open from the from the Open Graphic Arts website where all the stock images are. And in order for this to work, I have to make a selection first. If I chose free transform right now, it would want to transform the entire document. And I just want to transform one of these signs. So I'm going to quickly make a selection of, well, and I'll make sure you do a good selection and not a bad one. My cursor is too big, so I'm going to make it smaller. You want to make a selection of the, the board. I think this might actually be better with the polygonal lasso tool. And if I could find it, where did it be? And so I'm just going to quickly make that selection. Now you could refine this selection using the methods that we've also learned about in class. You could feather the edge, you could use the refine and mask tool. I'm just going to duplicate it really quickly and so I have a background layer here and then I have a selection of my sign that I want to modify and so for non-destructive editing I'm going to duplicate the selection and I can do that by using command or control J on the keyboard and then if I turn off my background layer you can see that I have just the sign selected. And so now that I have Let's zoom out here. Now that I have just uh, the thing that I want to transform on its own layer, I don't have to make a selection anymore. I'm going to transform the entire layer, which just happens to be just a small portion of the artwork. And so with layer one selected, if we choose edit and then free transform, you'll get a bounding box that has handlebars on your screen. Let's zoom in here. And then you can, if you hover over the corner, you'll get a little arced arrow. You could rotate it and change the direction that it's going. Um, you could also, if you get straight or angular uh, handlebars, you can change the shape. If you hold shift, it'll constrain the aspect ratio, meaning that it won't look distorted. Um, it won't look like you pulled it tall or you, or you stretched it wide kind of thing. And then if you want to experiment with them, it's not a requirement right now, but you can use your command or your control key on a PC, your option or your alt key and your shift key, and in different combinations, different things will activate and you can distort and warp. Um, the different things. I'm kind of a fan of using the free transform just for rotate and, and scale and then any of the other options I will um, use edit transform and then I'll specifically choose the transformation I would like to make. If we jump back to the slideshow I can show you those other transformations and then we'll jump over to Photoshop and I'll show them to you. And so skewing and distorting kind of do something very similar. They allow 
uh, one of the four handlebars surrounding the transform object to be moved um, and create a distorted look. In this example, moving one handlebar makes a sign appear to be pointing in a different direction. And then if you hold down the option or the Alt key if you're on a PC while applying either transformation, it will cause the handlebar that is directly uh, across on a diagonal from the one that you've selected to also be modified and so you can distort your image and change the perspective and so by by adjusting the skew and then and distorting the, the sign here I've kind of made it look like the sign is pointing more towards us than the rest of the signs. There's also a perspective uh, transformation that you can make and you can change basically how your image looks um, in terms of the perspective. And so perspective transformations allow Photoshop users the ability to change the angle upon which the object appears to be placed. One handlebar is selected and then adjusted and when you do that it also automatically adjusts the corresponding handlebar horizontally. And so you can see in my example here, maybe I grabbed the handlebar in the top right hand corner and I pulled it to the right. And when I did that, it automatically pulled the handlebar to the left. So I'm creating a distortion in the perspective. Now you don't always have to do a horizontal perspective adjustment. You can do a vertical uh, perspective adjustment, which would require the top and the bottom handlebar to be adjusted, maybe both on the right side or both on the left side of the image. To do this, you can hold down the Option or the Alt key and it will change the direction the perspective will be warped. And so if we go back to Photoshop, we can take that same image that we were just using for the free transform and I'm going to apply that. Now we can choose edit and transform and we can choose to rotate or scale but I've already did that with the free transform and so let's demonstrate skew and distort and they do something pretty similar and so with skew and distort if you grab one handlebar you can edit that corner independently of the others and so you can do different things here. If you hold down the option or the alt key as you're doing it it will take the handlebar that's directly opposite across on an angle, so on a diagonal, and it will also modify that one, and so you can do different things there. And so you can see what happens when I use this transformation. I'm going to undo that, and now we'll choose Edit, Transform, and I'll do Distort because it works very similarly to Skew. And so if I grab one handlebar, it modifies independently. It's a little bit more control. You saw in the first one if I moved my handlebar too much, I kind of snapped into different positions. And now if I press the Option key, it will also modify the handlebar that's directly across the image on a diagonal, and it will give different effects. I'm going to undo that. Now if I go to my bike image, you can see that my bike has a specific perspective where I'm looking down um, the middle of the bicycles. If I, so I'm going to duplicate this, but in this case I'm or I'm going to duplicate this layer. In this case, I don't want to modify one part of the image. I want to modify the entire image. I want to change the perspective upon which we are viewing this image. And to do that, we can choose the Edit menu, Transform, and then Perspective. And now, if I click any handlebar and I drag it, it's going to drag the opposite handlebar horizontally with it. And so if I take the top right-hand corner, let's zoom in here, if I take the top right-hand corner and I drag it in, Proportionally or equally to that, the left handlebar is also going to come in and it's going to change the perspective and almost make it look like it, I'm zoomed way out and I'm looking far away at it. I'm going to change, turn the background off so that you don't have to see two images. And if we do that again, now if I go out, if I pull out, it makes it look like I'm looking down on the objects and it completely changed the perspective of which we're viewing it. You don't always have to change the perspective in a horizontal method, if you hold down, if you click a handlebar and you hold down the option key, you can adjust the perspective um, vertically. And so I can pull the right hand side down and make it look like the object is moving further away on the right hand side. It could even come through and you can, can move it up and down on the sides and vice versa. And so you can play around with that. I would encourage you to um, make the perspective modifications in a subtle way or not as drastic as I'm showing you so that you can see the true effect of, of what, what happens when you use that perspective work. Okay, I would like you to try to use the free transform tool to minimally rotate and scale something, make a selection first, duplicate it, put it on, on its own layer. 
Then I would like you to play around with the distort and the skew options that are under edit transform and experiment with them and see what you can create. Again, I would recommend um, doing that with an item on a workspace, not the entire uh, image. And then also play around with the perspective uh, transformation, see if you can change the angle upon which an image is viewed. And when you're comfortable with all of those, you can move on to our next video and we'll talk about warp, which I think is the funnest of the transformations that we're going to talk about today.